welcome to the fourth lecture on basic control systems in the past three lectures we have uh, introduced control systems uh, we have seen some of the terminology uh, related to control systems we have seen examples of open and closed loop systems uh, we have seen the differences between open and closed loop systems and the advantages of closed loop systems uh, we also saw in the last term the design process that the control system engineer has to undergo before he actually designs a controller for some processor plant and then we talked about standard test inputs uh, that we normally apply to control systems today we are going to see a, another example to uh, make the whole concept slightly more clear this example is of uh, is a good example to understand how control systems operate in real life it is an example of an automobile driving system suppose you are driving a car um, or even a scooter right so uh, how do we understand it in from the control systems perspective how do we see it from the control systems perspective it's a very interesting example so basically let us try to draw the uh, you know uh, the functional block diagram right the functional block diagram because there is nothing much in the schematic for this uh, just have a car with a driver sitting inside uh, let us draw the functional block diagram for 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 an automobile driving system for somebody driving his car right so basically you have this car or this vehicle we will write like a block here so you have this vehicle here and what let us now try to see what are the outputs of the vehicle so normally you have two outputs from any vehicle you go in a particular direction right and you go with a particular speed so this is a very basic model for a vehicle you can also talk about acceleration and other things but let us stick to the basics so these are the two outputs from the vehicle now what are the inputs that go into a vehicle so you control the direction uh, using uh, the steering wheel position so you have a, the steering in your hand so the steering wheel position is one of the input that goes in to the vehicle and the other input which controls the direction is actually your brake as the speed sorry is actually your brake or the accelerator that you press right so with the help of this input the steering wheel position we control the direction of the vehicle i mean the, with the help of the other input the brake or acceleration uh, accelerator we control the speed of the vehicle now how do you do it right so uh, the steering wheel right uh, you control with the help of your hands right so you have your hands here and how do you control the brake or accelerator you use your feet here right so uh, one right foot for the uh, 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 accelerator uh, uh, and the left for the uh, the left for the uh, clutch and brake and the right for the accelerator right so uh, i'm not talking about uh, gears and change in gear ratio and engagement of clutch and disengagement of clutch for the time being right i'm making a very basic a very simple model for the car so we just have you can assume that it has it it works in only one gear so you just have direction and speed because <clears throat> with the help of gears you actually also control the torque uh, that is being applied to the vehicle but let us leave that for some time so so your hands control the steering wheel position and your feet control the brake brake or the accelerator now how do you do this right how do you know that you have to turn right or you have to turn left or you have to apply brake basically your brain uh, right processes the information that is coming from outside so if uh, if the road is turning right you use your hand to turn the uh, uh, vehicle right or if somebody comes in front of the car you apply use your feet to apply the brakes right so basically it is the information from the brain that is going to your hand and your feet so that you are applying certain logic right controlling the speed of the car now what is the input to the brain right how do you decide that uh, you actually have to go in a particular direction or you have to you know uh, stop the car or so on and so forth 
right so basically one of the input is the direction of the of the road so you can say the road direction right the road direction is one of the inputs that is going in right and there are many other inputs like uh, you can also say uh that uh, you have speed limits for example so this is the direction uh, input and you have the speed limit input right speed limits like you, you are supposed to limit your speed at certain places to a certain degrees right so you can take this as another input you know, speed limit input uh and basically you you will actually see the road direction it is an input and you'll actually see the speed limit it is another input and then you will basically check it with with your actual direction so if 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 your road direction changes you also have you have to see the actual direction of the car, uh, vehicle and change it accordingly so basically you have a feedback system here right so i'll just draw this in another color there is this is uh, no connection sign so you here this is you're tapping from here right so what you are doing is you are checking the uh, uh, error between the road direction and your actual direction continuously and if the error is large suppose you are not moving in the direction of the road then you apply a corrective measure right this is what it means you are continuously checking the direction in which you are moving with reference to the direction in which you are supposed to move the direction in which you are supposed to move is the direction of the road and you're continuously doing it and once the road say for example here and the road turns right there is an error here and your brain tells your hands to uh, move the steering wheel position to the right right this is what it means so this is the feedback loop here similarly suppose you reach a place where the speed limit changes you were driving on a highway the speed limit was say um, 80 kilometers per hour and you suddenly are inside Uh, a city and the speed limit is 40 kilometers per hour so the speed limit is changed and you have to check the speed limit that is actually applicable in the area in which you are driving to the speed which is currently that you have so this is another uh, feedback loop uh, that has to be that is particularly there and how do you basically check what what are these error detectors here so these error detectors are actually in this case who tells you this error this is this is your eye that tells you the error so these are your eyes in both the cases right these are your eyes which tell you that there is an error in in the sense that your direction is not right or your speed is not right and you you apply that error is basically processed by your brain and then you take corrective measures okay uh are there any disturbance inputs yes of course i was talking about application of brake or application of uh, uh, change in direction because of some obstacle in a, uh, in front of you so you might you might have some disturbance inputs right so the, the disturbance would be caused in speed it could be caused because of uh, because of uh, wind it could be caused because of traffic right so uh, so you might need to change your direction or your speed because of some disturbance inputs which you have not envisaged earlier right so uh, let, let me make this that is smaller here so that i incorporate the disturbance input this is like this and here we put in plus uh, minus uh, this is another this is this is a sign so this is a disturbance right a disturbance in uh, input as far as your as far as your direction is concerned so your direction could be disturbed because of because of an obstacle or something right so so this is the disturbance and of course you'll be taking your feedback from outside this loop is like this similarly you could have a disturbance in the speed output as well so you can have another summing block here and you have certain disturbances that act on your speed right 
so basically uh, how do we connect it uh, to what we have studied till now so so these are your these are your inputs right these are your inputs this is now after the summing junction this is the error right the error or the actuating signal at this point here yeah. and then this is your what is the brain the brain is brain hands and feet are actually this is the controller right this is the controller this whole thing is actually controlling the vehicle so this is the controller right and what is the system that you are controlling this is the system the plant or the process that you are controlling plant we call it plant we call it process or we also we can call it controlled system also so this is the system that you are controlling so this is the controlled system or the plant or the process that you are trying to control and what are the outputs from the uh, plant or the process that you are trying to control the output is a particular direction and the output is a particular speed with which it is moving okay uh inside the controller you can have further classification the brain is actually doing the work of basically developing the logic so you can say this is the control logic right normally also in uh, in man made control systems the brain would be a computer or a microprocessor or a microcontroller and then there would be actuators these are called these are things that actually apply the input on the uh, plant or process so these are these are actuators so you can call your hands and feet as actuators so these are applying the the control logic that you have generated here they are you they are acting it upon the vehicle right and this whole thing can be put in the controller block now what is uh, slightly special about this system and of course we have already talked about disturbances so the disturbances can be in terms of uh, in terms of uh, disturbances can be in terms of uh, in terms of traffic in terms of uh, somebody blocking the way suddenly uh, in terms of wind direction also because wind can also be a disturbance it can you know move your vehicle uh, towards it can tend to move your vehicle towards a particular direction right or left so on and so forth so what is uh, what is slightly special about uh, about this uh, uh, this automobile driving system functional block diagram that we have seen is that <coughs> is that there are two inputs right there are two inputs and there are how many outputs there are two outputs if we make a slightly detailed diagram we might be able to say that there are more than two inputs and there are more than two outputs right but let us stick to the simple one so this kind of a system in which you actually have uh, two inputs more than one input and more than one output what we called multiple input multiple input multiple output multiple output system output control system right control system so this is this is uh, memo multiple input multiple output system right as compared to systems that we will generally see in this course which will be single input single output systems right so normally we start with single input single output systems uh, ciso systems single input single output systems but this is a special uh, a case of a system which has two inputs two outputs so we call it multiple input multiple depending upon the number of inputs that you have and depending upon the number of outputs that you have right so uh, i think it is very clear from the definition now now let us come to what we what we were actually doing on the last turn so so this is not sufficient right uh, this is just to understand broadly what is happening but uh, suppose you want to make a self driving car right you want to make a self driving car self driving car right which is doing all this activity which actually is done by the human being who is the controller here which is doing all this activity by himself by itself right 
uh, as you would be aware this is a this is an area of research uh, these days also and there is there is a lot of development in this and big names are working on self driving cars uh, big names in technology throughout the world so what what would you need for this all this processing to take place inside a computer right so of course uh, there are many things that you will need but some very important things that are there are that you would need sensors isn't it you would need sensors to sense the direction the speed right you would need uh, uh, you would need uh, computers to con- to basically calculate uh, how much speed how much acceleration whether to apply the brake or not right and you would need uh, then uh, some motors to control the steering wheel direction uh, right uh, some electronics to control the brake and accelerator and so on and so forth but fundamentally what is very important is that you would need a mathematical model for for everything that you are trying to control because if you are going to uh, if you are going to actually make a system uh, that works you need to basically be able to model it properly first right so the first step is what is what is this car right what is this vehicle how do you model it right how do you model how do you find a mathematical model for for a car right mathematical model for uh, a a vehicle right or for that matter any plant or process right and why do we need this mathematical model we need this mathematical model because as i said because we are trying to control it using a computer we are trying to control it uh, using sensors right we are trying to develop a control uh, scheme for it and we cannot develop a control scheme for it till we are able to understand mathematically what a, what is it like right so so the the first part of uh, this uh, whole course deals with modeling right so let us take this example right so what would a car be actually right a car is actually uh, if if you look at it it's basically an electro if it's an electric car right uh, electromechanical mechanical system right it's a, uh, it's a combination of number of mechanical parts a number of electrical parts right and uh, if it is a say petrol driven or a diesel driven car then there are many other things right so how, how do we actually uh, model something right so the models come from first principles mathematical models come from first principles and what are first first principles first principles are the basic laws of physics that apply right basic laws of physics right basic laws of physics Uh, are applied to things and then we come out with a model for it like for example the model for the the model for the power loss power loss in a conductor in a conductor the model for it right the model for this is a resistance r so you say uh, that this resistance r actually models the power loss that is taking place right uh, and the voltage drop that is taking place so in case this is a dc circuit the voltage drop is going to be ir and the power loss is going to be i square r so what is happening actually in nature is the power loss and what you have done is you have expressed it mathematically by saying power is equal to i square r we also saw the model for a potentiometer on the last turn when we were trying to understand how it functions basically now uh, generally the systems that we are trying to control would be dynamic systems dynamic uh, or dynamical systems what does what does that mean it means that their variables will change with time variables would be functions of time the systems would have certain descriptions in terms of variables and these would be functions of time right 
so the dynamical systems are normally if you do first principle modeling of dynamical systems you will get differential equations differential equations right right so for example uh, 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 to take another example we model inductances right uh, we model the voltage drop that takes place because of varying current we say the model is the inductance so vt is equal to l d i t by d t right and similarly we model uh, the leakage current uh, in terms of capacitances we say i t is equal to uh, 1 by c in uh, sorry let me write it like that uh, i t is equal to c d v t by d t for the capacitor right so what are these equations these equations are actually differential equations differential equations and why did we have to resort to differential equations why because these these are applicable to systems where the variables change with respect to time they are constantly changing right uh suppose we are talking about a dc circuit in which everything has settled down then the inductor is going to be a short circuit and the capacitor is going to be an open circuit and you don't need to maybe talk about it unless there is some change taking place in the system right so in case uh, of systems like that you are satisfied with algebraic equations so you can write p is equal to ir or something but when 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 the system parameters sorry when the system variables are changing with time then the models are differential equations because these systems are dynamical systems things are changing with time so you will get equations like this and you'll get more complicated equations for example uh, if you if you take an rlc circuit a series rlc circuit so you will be writing an equation it should be something like this dt is equal to r i t plus l d i t by d t right plus 1 by c integral i t d t right so these are the basic uh, models uh, from which we start uh, our discussion about uh, control systems right and we'll see about them in more detail from the next lecture on it thank you very much